Uh, God is good. It is good to see everybody on Sunday morning today. And as the offering baskets are passing around, I'm just going to, and the kids are making their way to Sunday school. I want to let you know that if you come with children that are younger than that, a nursery every Wednesday and every Friday, every Friday, every Sunday and every Wednesday, there are people um, in the nursery. If you would like to volunteer, girls preferably, um, you can volunteer to also help in that area. Um, our pastor is back from uh, Africa and Korea. Let's give him a round of applause. He's going to be speaking today in just a few minutes. But before that, I'm going to make a few announcements. In about 19 days, we're going to have our church anniversary conference here. So it's going to be on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, November 20th through 22nd. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. We're expecting awesome things at this conference. We're believing we're going to release a CD. And also we are going to have a lot of other amazing things that are happening. A lot of preparation is being done. Also, as every Friday, most of you know that we have a school here, School for Mentorship school for new believers and school for the teenagers some 12 weeks the rest of them are five weeks and so we challenge every person that you make it out of your time to come and to learn and then there is a night prayer that happens at nine o'clock here every single friday and a lot of other things that are happening in the future of our church that we are really excited and looking forward to but i want to not just promote but to encourage highly every single person about their prayer life if you can put up a verse uh, for me please in Luke chapter 11 verse 1 and 2 says the following one day Jesus was praying in a certain place when he finished one of his disciples said to him Lord teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples and he said to them when you pray say our father hallowed be your name your kingdom come I want you to notice something in this in this verse is that disciples saw Jesus praying his prayer was secret but it was so constant that disciples saw him praying. Now Jesus didn't need to pray. He was God. If there was anybody who did have an excuse not to pray, it's not you and me, it's Jesus. He still prayed. So if your excuse, if you are son of God, walking on water, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers and you know everything about everyone who picks up water out of a fountain, and you come to that spiritual state and you say I don't need to pray well that is not true Jesus prayed but until you get to that season and to that time you're not going to ever get there without a life of prayer amen and the disciples see him praying and they ask Jesus teach us how to pray now disciples uh, some people always say the disciples never asked Jesus how to teach them to do miracles but they asked him how to pray and they said teach us how to pray because we know that you pray differently than the rest of the people pray and also we see John the Baptist he prayed and he taught his disciples how to pray I want you to remember this great leaders have great prayer life great leaders have great prayer life if you want to be a leader in the area of your in, in the area of your work if in the area of the company that you're working you want to be a leader instead of being always tossed and being thrown the left hour uh, left hours always being you know bullied and made fun of and you have no influence whatsoever you have no integrity your name means nothing if you want to be a leader you must understand what makes somebody a leader a great follower you become a follower of God the better leader you will be will be dependent on a great follower of God that you will be. You see John and you see Jesus and you see disciples all aiming for one thing. We want to be leaders in our generation they said but we want to be great followers of our God first. Teach us how to pray. If you develop a greater prayer life God will add influence to your place. God will add influence to not just the area of your home group but the area of your family, the area of your finances, the area of your career, the area of your school and the area of the projects that you work on. Remember great leaders are not great because they were born great. It's because they become great through having a great prayer life. Great relationship with God. Amen. And we see another thing is that great leaders also teach others how to pray in our church it is our desire to teach the generation not just how to manage their finances though it's important not just how to find a right spouse even though it's very important not just how to finish school even though it's critically important if you learn all of these things but you don't have a relationship with God all of these things will not last the test of time only Holy Spirit only relationship with God is what will sustain your life that is why in the church 
doors open Monday to Friday at five o'clock for prayer we why do we do that because most people do not pray at, at home most people they say we pray and the way of their prayer is is this when I ask people sometimes like so you have a prayer life yeah I pray every day before I go to sleep I said run run me through that prayer he said well I thank God for this day and then I, I go to sleep I was like how long does that last they said about 20, 25 seconds I have a better relationship with the barista on the Starbucks on 395 than you have with God I'm like you're kidding me this God sent his son to die on a cross for you you know the barista's name she knows the kind of coffee you always order. She knows the kind of car you have, the kind of job you have. And you spend a minute and a half talking to her, but to a God of universe who holds the heartbeat, who holds your universe and who is going to send an angel to pick you up on the day of your death, you spend 15 seconds with him. That's not cool. God deserves a valuable time. God deserves to be first in our life. If you want to find excuse not to pray, you always will. But if you want to find a reason to build a relationship with God, you always will. You'll always find what you look for because the Bible says those who seek will find. I see people in our church sometimes, for example, uh, Oksana is one of them. She lives now uh, in our house and she is in our house right now because she's sick. And she works an hour away from Tri-Cities. And so she wakes up around four o'clock in the morning and then takes care of her things, does, does her things, comes to church before work for about 35 to 40 minutes, drives an hour to work, comes back after work, is in charge of Sunday school, participates in worship, which they have worship practices and they have to be at church early, helps with teens ministry, attends one home group and then attends another one. And you will ask her, say, is, is your life burdened? And then you will find out she also, also looks for other things to do. It's all about a mindset. If you are one of those kind of victim, poor little me, my life is just being squished, so many things to do, remember you will always find an excuse. But if you find, if you look for a reason, you will always find a reason. You will find a reason before work, after work, in the middle of work, but you will find time to spend time with God in Jesus name. Amen. I want to challenge every person. Make prayer a priority make prayer a priority don't look for excuses be a strong person involve God God will make you a great leader in the area of your work on Sunday morning so we have prayer you know six times during the week on a day of on a Saturday we observe Saturday so we have a Sabbath day uh, the church you know we don't do none of the spiritual activities here just do them at home <laughs> for those who do them but on Sunday also we have a sacred time at 9 15 we come for prayer here now so, some of you don't know but actually in here there's prayer in the classroom there is prayer and there is prayer here we're at 9 15 till 9 45 till 9 50 there is prayer that is being offered prayer is being offered during the service as well for souls and there is going to be more prayer offered because the church is not a house of entertainment it's a house of prayer because it's a house of prayer it's going to be a house of miracles a house of answers a house of blessings of God and a house of God grace blessings in Jesus name amen let me tell you about Rogers Bob Rogers he's a pastor in, in the United States and has a member church membership of 9,000 people at the age of 21 he visited South Korea the place where a pastor visited um, and he saw how people young people a thousand five hundred people were fasting for the whole week on the prayer mountain they took days off school off and went to pray he was 21 years of age he was single he was in the bible seminary he was never he never saw a prayer like that he never saw fasting like that when he came back home he decided to start to pray and fast and so in the beginning it started with one day a week he would fast and then he decided to have a challenge of 30 days going 30 days without missing prayer he succeeded in that challenge he graduated from bible seminary decided to increase from one day to fasting three days a month and then praying instead of 100 days to pray for a whole year not missing a day and then he succeeded in that and then he went on to fasting for 21 days and then he went on to fasting 40 days and he said he fasted eight times 40 days and every single year from 50 to 150 days every year he spends times fasting he said during the first time that he went on on a fast for 21 days he started to have services every evening in his church prayer services in that 21 days 28 people were healed of cancer he said until that time I've never seen one miracle in my ministry he regularly has a visitation of God's angels 
that show up in a physical form and give him specific instructions. One day he used a soccer team in his state to transport and smuggle Bibles to China. 2,000 Bibles he decided to smuggle to China through soccer team. And so he had a deal with the soccer coach because it was his friend. He went to China with them. At night God's angel came in a physical form and said, the travel guide who will take you next morning works for the government and she will betray you. You will be in jail. So this is what you have to do. Take the Bibles that you're smuggling right now with the, with the soccer team and relocate them. When the travel agent came next morning, she didn't find any Bibles. He was safe. Then the angel came again next night and says, this is the contact of a person. You should call. They are Christian and they will pick up the Bibles. And so he begins to share a lot of stories in his life where physically God's angel would come to him at night and he all credits that to a consistent priority of life of prayer and relationship with God. I want to challenge every person. I'm not saying maybe angel will show up but there will be unexplainable, good unexplainable things in your life when you prioritize relationship with God. Amen. When you don't live a life of prayer you will live a life of sin. You can't live a life of prayer and a life of sin for too long. If you're living a life of sin today, the goal is not to abandon the sin. The goal is to start praying and you will see how sin will be quickly squeezed out of your life. If you live a life of prayer, you will live a life of miracles. I want to challenge every person. For those of you who are morning people, evening people, begin to start maybe one day a week if you haven't done it before come on Wednesday to morning prayer maybe you say I can't you know you've been doing one week hey begin to do it twice a week Monday and Wednesday if you've done it twice begin to increase it to three times until you come every morning and you develop a habit of praying to God on a regular basis this is not a deeper life higher life this is the only life Christ teaches us to live in relationship with God amen it is so beautiful to see our Friday night prayers like last Friday you know so many young people that come and this is not average where at nine o'clock in the evening on Friday people come and people say oh they have so many plans people don't have any plans okay their plans involve things that are not good you see after our Friday night prayers there is insanity workout in the gym it, it, it is what it is insanity <laughs> where people stay after you would think they're tired the people I always believe oh people are so tired they're not if they can stay after Friday night prayer till two o'clock in the restaurants fellowshipping or two more hours working out in the gym that tells you one thing young people are looking for us to lead them into a life of prayer and they will follow I met a young leader a youth pastor from another city on Friday before our Friday night prayer he came here for the classes and for prayer to be inspired and encouraged and I asked him about prayer in his church and I was very discouraged with the fact that there's almost no prayer those few prayer services that, that happens during the week, I asked him how many people attend them. And he said, well, there's it's two people, three people. The church is 70 people and two and three people come for prayer. I said, this is not right. This is not good. I'm proud of our church because I believe that God is going to do greater things because we are a church that prays. Can somebody say amen? So tomorrow morning, set your clock early, come out to prayer. Let's, let's see God move in our city, in your life, in your business, in your finances and in your family. Amen. Let's put our hands together one more time for the Lord.